Hello, so we are going to take a look at flying the A310 this morning. We're going to do a quick circuit of Stansted Airport and have a look at ILS and see how it behaves. So we are sat on the um, holding point for runway 22 at Stansted. So we've got everything programmed in on the master control panel. So 200 knots for the auto throttle, 3,500 feet for the climb out. We haven't calibrated the altimeter yet, so I'm just doing that. Um, 222 degrees for the heading, 20, uh, 2,500 feet per minute vertical speed. We haven't yet programmed the ILS, so let's just go and do that. So it's going to be 110.500 and 222 degrees for the course. So we'll just spin this knob back around until the course comes to 222, which is the, the runway direction. So along the way we'll have a little talk about the autopilot control and how to use the ILS or how to interpret what the ILS tells you. Okay, we'll also look at a quirk of this aeroplane that took me a good half an hour to figure out. Okay, we're coming off the brakes. We're going to put the flaps to take off position. rolling out towards the runway. I've turned the live weather off. It would have been really good for ILS to demonstrate to you because it's really foggy in Stansted this morning. But then you wouldn't get any visual feedback of where we are in terms of the runway to correspond with the ILS instrumentation, which would be a huge handicap if you've never seen this done before. So chosen to go with just one of the preset few clouds I think it's called in the sim so we still get to see where the ground is so we can you know make a correlation between what we're seeing on the instruments and what we're seeing out of the window okay so let's go and push the throttles forwards to about 95 percent you can see the aircraft is bobbling around a little bit if we had any crosswind Particularly with, with this A310, it does seem to struggle with the crosswinds hitting the tailplane and getting under the wings and causing roll, which is kind of impressive that, you know, if you're hand flying it, it's a bit of a handful. So yeah, there's a small amount of crosswind here this morning. So we're coming up to 140 knots, we'll rotate at 140. So the nose is coming up. Positive rate and gear up. We can go for auto throttle immediately. So we're looking to hold about 10 degrees on the climb out. We can then press the autopilot button on the yoke. I've got it mapped to a button. I have not glide hit the switch over here. Don't worry about glide slope, glide that's just slope. because we've got the ILS glide tuned slope. in. So we're climbing out towards 3,500 feet. So to make that happen, I have clicked the bottom half of each of these knobs, which means they are in selected mode. The rationale behind that is if you click the bottom half, you're pulling the knob towards you. And that means you are making the decision. So I've selected 200 knots. I have selected 3,500 feet. I've selected 222 degrees and I have selected well, it was 2,500 because we're... Actually, did I not do it? Let's go for selective mode. There we go. So without selecting it, it was in managed mode. So the aeroplane was doing what it saw fit to make that happen. So that's a bit like flight level change mode in a Boeing. So yeah, now it's got close to the altitude. It's gone back to managed because it's basically managing that tailing off of the climb towards 3,500. If you want the aircraft to make all the decisions for you, as you just saw, you click the top half of, an, of one of the knobs, and it is called managed mode. Now, for that to work for speed, altitude, and heading, you need to have a fully programmed flight plan, which we don't have. Okay? Okay, so now we're at 3,500. We're going to make the turn to 42 degrees, which is the reciprocal of the runway direction. 
spinning the heading knob round. and we can go and admire the scenery and the clouds whizzing by as that happens. So if we go and have a look on the map, I need to clean the map up actually. Map, delete aircraft trail, you can see past flights I've done. I've also got a flight plan on here that I've used in the past. Let's go and remove that as well. Okay, so you can see the aircraft now is, we've climbed down we're going to fly the reciprocal down to the other end of the feathers and have a look at what we're doing. So as soon as the plane levels out, I'm going to show you something that caused me quite a lot of grief. Notice as well, this lever works a bit like the, um, the Boeing levers in that you can move it to the centre position, which means it's not charging the hydraulics essentially. So once the gear is up, you can move it back to the centre position. I haven't raised the flaps yet, so we'll do that. We've also, yeah, there's, there's problems with this aeroplane, with the air brakes and the flaps. Not taking notice if you use the shortcuts in here. It's almost like everything gets extended, so you need to be very careful. If you go and set, activate a particular state, make sure you go and have a look around the aeroplane you saw there the flaps were not in the position I told them to be and neither were the air brakes obviously if you run from cold and dark you'll be configuring everything as you go so that's not an issue but that's the major problem of loading any aircraft with a given state is you don't know what state it's actually been left in and you end up having to check around everything yourself anyway See the airfield over there. So we're just going to fly out to the end of the feathers, come back in, and then we'll have a look at what the readings mean on the ILS and come in for an approach and a landing. I guess we could do two. First one we'll do manually, and then the second one, and we'll be talking about the ILS instrumentation on the way but we'll see how we go if if we get everything described that we want to describe on the one approach then that will be fine okay I said I was going to talk about something here so say I wanted to go and fly this manually now if I go and turn off the autopilot on the switch up here watch what happens we get a warning here and that alarm is not triggering one of the master caution lights. If we turn the autopilot back on, we're fine and everything's back to normal. So the trick being, if you turn the autopilot off, you can't do it here. You have to do it here. AP disconnect is on the yoke. Yeah, and you select it a second time and that goes away. Okay. If we want to engage it, we click it again and it engages it. So to, enge to disengage the autopilot, you essentially have to click this button on the yoke twice. Yeah, once to disengage and another one to cancel the warning. Now, I don't know if that's a bug. We might get an A310 pilot come in and say, yes, that's exactly how the real thing works. But I don't know if it's like a hybrid kind of bug with where they've tried to represent something in the simulator and you've got three states where there's only two ways of flicking the switches or something strange like that. Okay, so we're coming out towards the end of the feathers. We'll go beyond them a little way because I want to illustrate something to do with the symbology. So we are going to switch the, the mode of the display here away from nav to ILS. So suddenly the, you can see the parts of the diamonds have appeared this will all make sense when we turn around. So this is in correlation with the frequency and direction or course being tuned in. So it will be able to show us some symbology around our approach. So 
we're waiting for the aeroplane to get a bit further out. So you can see here comes the diamond. So all this is basically saying is, given how far away we are, at the moment we are above the glide slope. At 3,500 feet we are still above an invisible line behind us. If you imagine, oh, it's, this cloud has really appeared at just the wrong moment, hasn't it? can't see the airfield behind us. How classic is that? So the airfield's back here somewhere. If you imagine a glide slope, an invisible line up through the sky, and we're going to fly down it. So at the moment, when we looked, we're just about parallel with that line now. Yeah, and as it goes higher up, that means we are below that invisible line. So the trick being, when you fly into the, the glide slope, the, the, the beam down to the runway, if you want auto land or approach mode to work, you have to approach the glide slope from below the beam. The aeroplane will not capture the beam from above. It won't dive to the floor because that's dangerous. But if you fly straight and level into the beam, it will work. So we're going to turn ourselves round back to 222 degrees and hopefully you'll see that happen. But then I'm going to go manual and throw the plane around just to show you what the symbology does. So we're just turning the plane to 222 degrees. There we go. So we are below the glide slope. We are to the left of the beam. If we look in terms of the map, if you imagine that we'll draw a line on here, but we're not going to pay much attention to it. So we're going to say uh, measure, we do a measure distance just to have a line reference. So yeah, we are to the left of that beam in relation to going to the airport, yeah? Which is showing here, look. But we're getting closer to it, so that diamond will start to sweep in. We are still below that vertical beam, also oh vertical beam, the, the beam down towards the runway. That cloud's arrived at just the wrong moment, hasn't it? But that's fine. So we're coming around towards 222 degrees, there's the airfield. I'm hoping we won't be perfectly in line. Yeah, we're not going to be perfectly in line, which is great, because we got actually something to talk about. So you can see we're getting closer to that beam. If we go for land mode, now I've not tried this, I'm guessing this is what's later called approach mode. When we cross through that vertical beam, the plane should start to descend. We may need both autopilots on. Yes, and that's worked. So let's see if this works. If it doesn't, then I'm at a loss as to why it didn't. So will it start descending all on its own? No, it won't. Okay, that's fine. So land mode doesn't do what I thought it was going to do. So what do we do about these this beam. We are going to chase this diamond and that one. We're going to come off the throttles. Okay, so we're descending, we're dropping the flaps, we're dropping the gear. Notice we've got that warning happening again that I said about. We need to go and press that button to make the autopilot warning shut up. So look, look at the diamond sweeping across. We've just gone across the centre line of the runway. We are still high as well. So we're turning back across 222 degrees to chase it. It's good that these clouds are here actually, because we're validating the method. We're descending as well a little bit more quickly than we should, because we're chasing the glide slope, the three degree line through the sky down to the runway apron. So that we've gone to the left now. So I'm kind of fishtailing around on purpose. So we've sorted out the descent rate now. We're on that invisible line. And now, and there you go, there's the runway look. So you can see we're just off to the left of the centre line, which is il illustrated here. So if we press F and press space so we can see out over the nose. We'll zoom in a little bit so you get to see this nicely. So we look, we're just below the glide slope. So if I raise the nose, 
going to go full flaps now. So by raising the nose, we're gently coming up and you can see the glide slope is sliding back down towards us. So we're on that invisible three degree line down to the runway apron. Obviously, if we go to one side or the other, I'll just do that again to show you, you will see this diamond slide off to the left. Yeah. We're getting a bit slow. I'm just going to open the engines up slightly. Slow is good though, it gives us more time to talk. So we're dropping below the glide slope. So climb back up onto it. Well, that was a bad time for a stutter to happen, and another one. Okay, so we basically just follow those diamonds. So even if we couldn't see the runway, we can still follow the diamonds and we can get down to the runway fairly easily. So once you become, obviously once you're right in front of the runway, you're visual with the runway, it's no longer an issue. how slow we were able to come in there. Obviously that was far too slow. If you get the idea. That's quite cool how you get the thumping sound as you run over the cat eyes, isn't it? So there's quite a lot to juggle with, with looking at the ILS, but you're basically, you're following those diamonds down to the runway. Obviously we came in very, very slowly there. In a real approach, you'd be looking at maybe 130 knots minimum, and that gives you that excess speed, that extra 10 knots to flare out without stalling. So we were far too close to the stall limit on the way in. But again, that was just me wanting to go slow to give you more time to see things, really. But yeah, hopefully that has explained a little bit about how ILS works, if you've not seen it before and how it works in this. It's interesting that the land mode didn't work, so obviously I need to go and look at the documentation for that myself and see why it didn't engage. It may be that you need VOR lock and land mode, and that wouldn't be uncommon of other planes of this era would need both, but again, I need to go and read up on it. Yeah, that was a fun one. Right. I'm going to go and park the aeroplane up and I'm going to go and have a coffee. I think the major takeaway this morning though has been learning about that autopilot switch and the cancellation switch here to stop the alarm going off. I wasn't expecting that and it took me ages to get to the bottom of it. Put the flaps back up as we take it back in. Now, is that an ATR over there? That's been scheduled to arrive for Flight Sim for a very long time. It's been in development. I think Simworks Studios are doing one. Or maybe they're doing a dash. I'm not sure. There's both ATRs and dashes are in development. Can't wait for them to arrive. Have some decent turbo props to go and charge around in. Anyway, I'm going to leave this here. And I'll see you again soon. So obviously there's a ton of stuff to learn, learn on this aeroplane. If we can get hold of an A310 pilot to come and help us at Virtual Flight Online, that would be wonderful. Because then obviously we can um, ask them 101 questions about how does this work and how does that work and how does the other work without having to read the full um, operational, operational flight manual for the aircraft. Anyway, let's leave it there.
and I'll see you again soon. Take care.